I feel like with these three games, I kind of broke out of that comfort zone. Maybe not so much with Carrion, but definitely with this one and, and the third game that I beat, um, The Tourist. And, um, and, you know, I'm kind of glad I broke out of my shell with these two, two particular games because they offered such vastly different experiences than what I've ever really played. And uh, I'm glad I took the time to spend with them. Even though with The Tourist, I kind of walked away underwhelmed. Mm. Um, and, and for those that are listening and not familiar with it, it's tourist with Y S T rather than I S T. There is an in-game reason for that, that I will not divulge. Um, but, uh, it's a voxel based, um, platformer that I feel like tries to do too many different things. Um, it kind of markets itself as a type of game where you can, go swimming or go or deep sea diving or visit the amusement park or, or go shopping or dance. And it all loosely ties into like this overarching story of mystery where you run into this old tourist and he finds these ancient monuments that kind of have this mystery to them. Like, why are they here? Where did they come from? What's the deal with them? So you start exploring these monuments and this is where like the platforming and the puzzling comes in. And, you know, each monument kind of has its own different, uh, way of, of behaving. But the ultimate goal at the end of each monument is to pick up a blue orb and bring it back to the central hub. And it unlocks, you know, basically one part of a key that leads to a final monument. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a very, bizarre game um you know you're you have to there's there's a currency involved where you have to beat or you have to buy certain things for example um your character ultimately will have the ability to double jump your character will have the ability to run and uh you know um those two things combined will get you to platforms that you couldn't previously get to um but then you know, outside of that, like maybe you need a certain costume to get into a certain area. Um, there's uh, photographs of the different uh, monuments that you could take where you get paid for it, or there's a section where you could take photographs of people um, and you get paid for it. But it, quickly you end up with more money than you actually need. Like there's there's no reason to have so much currency in this game because you're never going to spend it all if you mm -hmm. do everything. And to just kind of beat the story, like you really only have to do the bare minimum. It's if you want to kind of branch out into these other mini games where you can get more currency, that's where um, the game tries to kind of flex its muscles. And I feel like it really fails on that. Uh, for example, uh, one of the islands that you go to uh, has a mini game where you can surf and you get points for surfing this wave. Um, and if you can get the most points, like if you hit like 10,000 uh, for your, for your points, uh, you get paid for it. And now you've beaten that mini game and you can play it as many times as you like, but you'll end up with like 20 coins or something. Right. Um, but the mechanics and surfing on that game are, are so half-assed. It's not enjoyable. What all, you know, at all. Um, in fact, it's, it's kind of frustrating and that's a recurring theme with all the mini games. There's a mini game where, uh, you can kick soccer balls into targets. There's a mini game where you could do pull-ups uh, and try to compete against some guy who's like super fit. There's a mini game where um, I'm trying to think of another one here. Uh, you have the photography ones. Oh, there's an arcade, right? There's a guy who um, he's like, oh, I'll give you money if you can beat my high scores. And there's three arcade machines in this uh, arcade. And it's simple games. Like there's a racing game. There's, you know, that block breaking game, like Arkanoid basically. Mm -hmm. And and then there was another one. I don't remember what it was And all three of them are just terrible. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> they, they just, they just suck. Like it's not it, like the, I love those classic games. These are not good versions of those classic games. Right. Um, and this is all done. Everything in this game, aside from those, those arcades anyway, Everything's done in like this kind of mock 3D world where when you're in the open island, you can look 360 degrees around. You can move the camera fully around and 
kind of make your way through. But whenever you're in a dungeon or one of the monuments trying to get to the the end and find that orb, uh, basically you, you're locked out of two of the four walls. So you don't have full 360 degree control of the camera. And this makes platforming in some of the more robust sections extremely difficult because your depth perception is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, towards the end of the game, there's this one section where um, you have to jump on these orbs. And as you jump on the orbs, the orbs go from dark to light. The orbs are suspended over a pit of death. And if you miss an orb, you fall in the pit and you die. Mm -hmm. Now, thankfully, you know, punishing death is is not too bad. Like uh, you fall in the pit and then you just respawn back up on the same platform and the same screen that you just died at. So you can kind of get back into it very quickly. Um, they don't make you go through an entire level all over again. Um, but the finding the right combination of turning the camera so you can see where you're jumping and then actually landing the jump uh, is incredibly challenging and extremely frustrating. Um, I must have spent an hour on that section alone. And I was almost at like the point of quitting the game because of how frustrating it was, but it was basically at the end. So I just kind of like toughed through it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, at the end of each monument, there's essentially a boss fight. The boss fight usually consists of you platforming and activating some sort of a rune or jumping on a platform that moves like a magic carpet or, um, just getting this, thing to kind of like uh land on the on a bomb or, you know it, it's very simple your character doesn't have any weapons it's all about you using the environment to the best of your ability to get you to the next phase understood okay. and um it's a very unique game uh there's a lot of love for this game for some reason <laughs> i don't fully understand it um you know if you look on uh I think Metacritic had like a, let me see if I can find the score real quick here. So uh, reviewers have it at a 79, users have it at 8.1 for the user score. But if you go on like uh, Google, for example, 96% of uh, players like the game and all the reviews are like four and five stars. Um, I am a little more uh, down on it. I don't know that I would recommend this game necessarily. Okay. It's short, which is great. Um, but like, it, like I said before, it gives you the option to do all of these different things and it really doesn't execute any of them. Well, um, the story is pretty interesting and I would be curious to see where it goes for a sequel, but I don't know that I have the energy to play a sequel if it plays this way. Mm, that's, that's unfortunate. 